What's up, crypto fam? Welcome back to the Opie Quarantine Studio. I'm Matt. I'm Chill. Thank you for joining us again. We got a great video for you here today. Um, we're going to be talking about a company called G and D, um, who's basically I think they've been around for over a hundred years. They're basically the uh, one of the world's uh, few. Uh, public money printing machines. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is one way to think the of them. OG brr machine. The OG brr machine. I like it. Um, and actually, in Zimbabwe, when they were having their hyperinflation, G and D had something to do with that, or they were supplying the physical, the physical money, like those trillion dollar Zimbabwe notes or billion dollar Zimbabwe notes. The G and D was the company like printing those and taking the order from the the Zimbabwean government. So. They're uh, pretty tied into the global banking system, to say the least. And uh, again, this was a good, some awesome research from Chill, so I'll let her explain a little bit more about our uh, our brewery friends. Right, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brewery friends. So for some reason, it completely flew under the radar. They published a white paper in 2017, so right when Bitcoin was 20K. Oh, so over three years, okay. Yeah, but I never heard of them, and this isn't something you're going to yeah. find in mainstream media. Definitely unless not. you're into nerding their <laughs> white paper, which I did. And I'm going to share um, the white paper in the description below. Um, mm. And so I read through their white paper, I think it's about 50 pages. Good Lord, okay. <laughs> Well, yeah. can you give us a summary? Because I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I have the attention span for a fifty-page yeah. uh, financial white paper. But I know that's right up your alley. <laughs> <laughs> right. So get ready, go make some popcorn. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the two main things that I, my my takeaway was from the white paper one um, is that. They, they say that the benefits of these, so, so basically they are working with six central banks right now to create CBDCs, this company, GND. GND is working with six other countries' central banks to create a CBDC, centralized... Central bank digital central currency. Central bank digital currency, or uh, I guess you could call it a... Uh, Controlling businesses directly through currency is how I like to think of CBDCs, right. but maybe yeah. that's my own <laughs> my own bias coming into play. So G and D is helping these central banks make a digital currency like anchored to blockchain. What I guess what does that mean? I and mean, we've talked about it a little bit in other videos, but what yeah, what's your initial thought on that? So uh, I just went by their plans based on the white paper. So they say that the benefits, obviously, um, they came out with this software called Philia. Okay. And this software will be able to produce these CBDCs, basically. So oh my God, it's a platform. <laughs> so it's a platform for CBDCs. Right. So it's Ethereum for CBDCs. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> oh my God, okay. And um, so, so one thing was that they think that the benefits of CBDCs, which I would argue it benefits who? Yeah. <laughs> the benefit the is The government that, controlling everyone. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so the benefit would be that they can put negative interest rates or uh, the interest could be programmed into um, Oh, the into money. the money. So I have $100 sitting in savings account. The Fed decides, okay, we're at 1% interest, so I get 1% on that. Or they decide, oh, no, we need to stimulate the economy. You're at negative 10% interest. So if you don't spend your money it's right gonna be away, 90 bucks. it's going to be 90 bucks. Ooh, that's scary. Mm. I don't like that at all. Well, they think <laughs> this is a benefit, so. Well, I mean, I, it is to the people trying to control the economy, but their track record isn't good enough to mm. for me to want to trust them. But Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's. That's a little concerning. I'm not. I'm not super excited about that. But it's good to know about that. This is out there and is, and is coming. You yeah. see everything kind of moving towards this. I mean, you think more and more central banks are going to do similar things to what Philly is offering? Definitely. I think at the beginning they thought crypto would just go away, and they were waiting to see kind of what happens. And mm. then all of a sudden they realized, well, China is going to be the first 
um, city to come out with their CBDC, which is already tested in cities. So now it's like the mad rush that everybody wants to. FOMO. <laughs> yeah, the, fo Fear the CBDC of missing out. FOMO. And uh, okay. Another thing that the um, white paper mentioned is the risk. And that's what was a, one of their concern is that previously they only had uh, instances where the SWIFT network, the money network, was hacked. Mm, um, so okay. in Bangladesh, the SWIFT network was hacked in 2016 and they lost $81 million. Oopsie. And that's the, that's the, like, the global payment network that all the legacy or the regular traditional banking institutions use. Bitcoin yeah. gets around that, but if you're using U.S. dollar or any country's currency, you're going through the SWIFT system internationally. Yeah, correct. Got it. Yeah. And so it was hacked for $81 million, mm -hmm. and part of this pitch that GND is putting out for Philly is, like, we won't, you won't, there won't be fraud through the SWIFT network. Well, actually, their concern is that now, if someone hacks the currency itself, they could. The danger is that they could shut down an entire country. Oh. Because now, before it was just a network, because we had no digital currency. But now, if we're gonna have a digital currency, someone can hack the actual currency. I see. I, yeah, I see what you're saying. You know, yeah, either shut down the servers that are it's running on, or I mean, there's a few different attack vectors. So. Hmm. Would you say that cent they're centralizing more power with the CBDC, which also creates more centralized risk if something goes wrong? Yeah. Boy, definitely. I wish there was a decentralized alternative out there if for only, currency. If only. <laughs> like something like Bitcoin would be Bitcoin would be a great name. That's a good. Uh, that, that, that would that would take away a lot of these risks and would be a little bit more form of sound money that I would be interested in. Right. But, right. Uh, so, I mean, so. part of the, the Bitcoin's network security is that the network is so large and you have the, the Bitcoin code on all these different computers around the world. Mm -hmm. So, for someone to hack Bitcoin, they would have to hack every single node. Right. And that's not something a CBDC is going to, they're not going to have the same amount of nodes or distribution of nodes very likely. So the security for a CBDC will be much, much lower than Bitcoin. And that's one of the risks talked about in GND's paper is all that centralized control is going to, could, could lead to something where like a currency just pops overnight and is like no longer able to be used the next day. Right. Who? Right. All right. Well, that's something to yeah. keep an eye on. Um, that's a great, great find. And yeah, thank you for bringing that to everybody's attention. Yeah, and so it's down below in the description. You can, if you like to also nerd out on <laughs> white papers, then um, feel free to check it out. Awesome, yeah. Jill is our resident financial researcher. She's <laughs> finding the good stuff that not everybody else sees. So keep up the good work. And if you like this video, please like, follow, subscribe. Theopi.com. We've got our course up there on how to buy Bitcoin, if that's something you want to get into. And, you know, just say hi, reach out to us. We love talking with the community and everybody. So, um, We yeah. love you guys. And let's create the open economy we all deserve. Yes.